Hey guys, here I am in uh, the store, and as you can see, this is our Game of Thrones display where we can show off this game and, and kind of let new players come in and check it out. Now one thing you may notice is that this box is exceptionally faded. Because it's been in the store this whole time, it's been like three, three and a half years, the sun's been hitting this thing, and it is just more or less muted. And we had a discussion that was, we need to replace this box. But about the time that discussion started, there was another discussion, which was Game of Thrones 2nd Edition. It's been announced, it's a new thing, it's coming, it's going to be released at Gen Con. We're super amped about it, Tywin's super amped about it, about as amped as Tywin ever gets. Uh, and so we have a very special occasion here, which is our very first preview for Game of Thrones 2nd Edition. It's a plot, it's super cool, and it introduces a lot of new kind of ideas to Game of Thrones that we thought were supremely important. So, uh, Zach and Robert are waiting for you over at that table. Join us there, and uh, let's talk about this thing, kind of figure out how it's gonna work. Hey guys. Hey, we're here. Imagine. Good to see you. We were thought? We've been you waiting here? to talk about G Game of Thrones. I'm glad you showed up. Yeah, we're here. <laughs> we're here. Robert, tell us what, what this preview is. Give it to us. Read it, read it, and uh, let, let the world know what's going on with so Game of Thrones. Is, second this is edition. one of the new plots. It's called Power Behind the Throne. It is a 3-1-1, which of course is gold uh, initiative and claim. It is noble and scheme traded reading. Scheme traded. Scheme, scheme. and noble. There's, noble traded plot. They're schemers. Uh, when reveal, place one stand token on power behind the throne, and then action, discard one stand token from power behind the throne to choose and stand a character. I have a question really quick. Yes. We, we, you know, are you talking about plots? I didn't finish. Nope. <laughs> Down here in the bottom right corner. <laughs> I was going to talk about that. Reserve of six. Reserve of so six. My question is, stat. when we're talking about plots, we normally say like 311 or 312. Yes. Do we now say 311 yes. six? 3116. Yes. Definitely. In, important. That's yeah, a discussion all that. its own. All right, so stand tokens, that's really fascinating. Well, let's look at, I mean, let's look at the general piece that this is. So first of all, it's got old art. It's got art that we recognize, so we know that they're going to be using old assets on some of these new cards. Still, it looks, it seems to look better, and I think that's just because of the templating mm -hmm. yes. of the card itself. Yeah, you have like little icons behind the 311. The icons are way better. Yes, they are. I mean, they are. they are way better. I like the little, there's a little piece missing on that claim icon mm -hmm. that kind of makes it look like rugged and kind of warlike, which is very, very Somebody sharp. Somebody took a bind out of it. Reserved, kind of hidden down there in the bottom corner, but still visible and an obvious uh, thing going on. Mm -hmm. Has the old red background. And I like the traits on this. Actually, yes. like if scheme could be like a trait that we utilize in plots where it's like after you reveal a scheme plot, mm -hmm. do this thing. Like I could play a deck that's really sneaky and scheming. Or you really have like events that trigger off of. Yeah. Or if you have a scheme reveal, the number of here's schemes. various, he but comes of, into play. But of course you have, you know, the scheme that you just talked about. But noble implies a lot of cool stuff as well because it's like, oh, this is a noble plot. This is what people at court are doing. This kind of yeah, thing. You might yeah. have army plots because this is yeah. what you're doing on the battlefield. This kind of thing. Yeah. It could be really exciting. That's I like really that cool. a lot. Yeah. Um, so, as you mentioned, the other thing, stand tokens. First of all, we've got a new token, mm -hmm. the stand token. Uh, <laughs> second, it's going directly on a plot. So we have a token on a plot itself. I don't think I ever saw that in first edition, no, necessarily. I don't think so. It's hard to think Just gold. back. But Just gold token. Yeah. Gold. Aside from that, <laughs> that, that doesn't even really go on the plot yeah, that's right. proper. Um, <laughs> so okay. these are, this is already a much more interactive plot card, more interactive than we've ever seen. And what... What is the idea, what is the logic behind introducing a stand token, right? So the, the immediate thing is like, if this plot said stand a character, it wouldn't do anything, because we know how Game of Thrones works, everything's yeah. already standing. Uh, Unless so you wanted to stand Bran in the plot phase. Is <laughs> like a pre-plot pre Neil stand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, ooh, ooh. Oh, hope, away from is there a pre-plot? I hope not. I, that's something else, please. Uh, please, the, no pre-plot. My, my great question about this is, is the stand token like, going to be a common asset of Thrones 2nd Edition. Characters are going to grant them, events are going to grant them. Is this the new way to stand characters? Or is this almost exclusive to this plot simply because it was a mechanic they wanted to use in the plot phase that didn't have any other elegant solution? Because mm -hmm. you don't want to have text that says, when the combat phase begins, uh, you know, choose and stand a character, those kinds of things, those persistent passive effects I, I that I think Thrones is trying to get away from. I would. I'd be surprised if it is exclusive to this plot. Right. It's it's really cool because I can imagine like attachments or characters that when they come into play they generate stand tokens, but it's not like uh, you know first edition long lances where it's like every time a character enters play you you have this passive like standing crazy yeah. ability. Yeah. Yeah. Keeps it more kind of in the box there. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. So you just have a way of basically generating a stand without having to 
make it so abusive as previously could have happened. Yeah. yeah. And if that's the reasoning, then that's fantastic. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, I also think a certain amount of just like, so before in, in first edition, it was gold and power tokens. So I'm curious to see where they go with this because yeah. like a stand token to me offers a certain bit of clarity where you can, like if there's a stand token or a, something symbolizing it, uh, it's very hard to forget that that's there yeah. mm-hmm. versus like a passive or a, you know, not not interrupt a reaction or a, yeah. a response a response window there it is yeah. I was like every game going through like the the response keywords uh, or a forced response but I, I think that's really really fascinating and we yeah. we expect to see like the interrupt basically like language in in second edition I mean I would it's I like, would too that's where they've been going that's where the design team has been constantly moving towards these kind of clear I think I remember seeing it on some of their like video mm-hmm. previews and whatnot but I can't swear to it but yeah they've yeah. kind of updated all their templating and. Uh, Vocabulary that goes with it, so. which is probably the most exciting, yes. exciting yeah. thing. Well, all I need tell you. you what, just clean up well, this game. And it's, what is it's interesting about this, though, because I know one thing Nate was talking about at Worlds is that they're expanding the gold curve, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're seeing a three one one and thinking that's about normal, that's but that's low. That's I think low. that's real low. That's yeah. actually pretty low. I yeah. think like yeah. that used to be like the average, but that can't the Four average shifted it up. Yeah, probably. Uh, but I do think I I, I want to feel like the six reserve value is not low. Like, yeah. I feel like that's like a yeah. solid number. Um, but that's really curious. So, standing like you're giving up a little bit of gold to have the ability to stand. Well, let's let's think about what you know what a stand token ultimately is going to represent for me as a player playing a deck that's running this plot. I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is it's basically you're marking a character, mm-hmm. and it says this character will do what I want it to do, no matter what the Lannisters or whoever the the new kneelers are, if there are new ones. The kneelers uh, not want to say ones. about it. Secondarily. I can put this on a character that I want to do something twice with, right? So assuming you don't have any kneel effects, then it's like, think about the old Danny, first edition crazy Danny that, you know, attacks and kills people. <laughs> like, if I put a stand token on her, it's terrifying, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so, and it happens immediately. So it's like, it's, it's way more balanced than the surprise effect that comes out of your hand. It's like, oh, I wasn't planning for that. You have an entire marshalling phase to realize that you have this threat that you have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's either either waste a kneel effect and they use the token and I only have to suffer it once. I try to otherwise remove her icons, well, store in the marshalling phase, noting, those kinds of things. The stand token here goes onto the plot. Yes. Yeah, yeah definitely. So it's, it's, the threat of what it can do is what is crazy to me. Because like if you have an army or something out, or like three really good characters and mm-hmm. they're knelt because I attacked first. Totally. Um, you, you don't know what I'm going to stand. So like you have to start attacking or blocking in such a way that like I can have more strength available that, to block. Yes, I thought that it went. You chose something, and it went. It goes right on the. It goes block. on the plot. It goes on the plot. Yeah. So you don't have to commit to and it. That, it's and just that's like, crazier, like Zach's saying. That's like even you, better. You actually have to pay attention to that because wow. that's a lingering threat, either offensively, defensively, mm-hmm. yeah. ability-wise. Like you're saying. It's, now I will say, I mean, bananas. with a one initiative, though, odds of me going first with that are right. a lot lower. But still, yeah. either way, it's like just knowing that, like, you don't have to choose. He could do whatever he wants with this. Yeah. Yeah. And at least, well, going back to that that train of, that errored, I guess, that mistaken train of thought that I had with putting stand tokens on characters. Do you think that's a mechanic that we're going to see? I think, I so. think so. Yeah, yeah, that's, like, that's what I was saying earlier. So that like, would make it pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, an attachment too, or a location that generates stand tokens, but then like that's all the stand you get from it. Because yeah. stand, uh, in and of itself, stand in, in Thrones one point at least was one of the most pow- powerful effects. Mm-hmm. Yes, possible. Not like stand yeah. is just ludicrously powerful. Very. So I'm I'm excited to see stand in the form of a token. Mm-hmm. Whether it's an attachment or a location or a character that drops a token or has a token that they can then spend, but then doesn't have a way to like keep doing it because mm-hmm. that's that's when you run into that's issues. when you run into problems. Yeah. yeah, you stand the standing thing that stands the stand. Yeah, and who know we may see a, a it may be in the rule book that says a character can only have one stand token. True, like we ne- we don't know what we're gonna see. Yeah. so it's exciting and, and worth noting on this particular stand ability that you can use it on anybody's character. It's not just your own. So it's yeah. like. If you have any of those like weird little scenarios, she's like a standing character. Valador Heroes. Yeah, I was gonna say Valador Heroes, where it's like, like standing oh, characters dying. I would like you to go ahead and stand at this point in time. <laughs> that that Danny there, she, she can stand up. Toodles. Yeah. Do a little standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess finally for the evaluation of this plot, I think we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the flavor of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think second edition is proving to be a very flavor-filled representation of Game of Thrones. The templating of the cards, the art styles are starting to unify a little bit, where we have this kind of similar styled art throughout the entire game. Even the, uh, we saw the Danny card in the preview, mm-hmm. and it's like, 
there, this is basically a giant piece of art that we're seeing different parts of cards from the same piece. Which is always awesome. Thematically unifying these things. It's just like yeah. super cool. So Power Behind the Throne allowing you to basically at any point during the round stand somebody. Mm-hmm. How about the flavor of that that the, the backroom deals, the whispers <laughs> are basically giving you this, oh my gosh, advantage yes. that, you, that you didn't really see coming. Mm-hmm. It seems very thematic. Very flavorful. I agree, man. Yeah, it's really good. I'm, I'm curious. Obviously, we, we don't have a bunch of plots to compare this to, so we don't yeah. know uh, the, the relative power level, but standing's always phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, the gold's not horrible. It does seem a little low, and then the reserve value seems... Seems okay. At yeah. least good. Uh, average claim. You start with seven, low so... Yeah. Was so average claim, yeah. Av- low initiative, but yeah, it seems... I'll also be curious on the noble scheme plot. Exactly. Triggering, so that, yeah. that's all up in the air. But overall, it looks great. Okay, I'm super stoked for this game. Well, that about does it, I think. Uh, about as good as we can speculate, given how little we know about second edition. Given so, what we've been given. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> we're at least somewhere in the ballpark of evaluating this card. Thank you guys out there so much for watching. And second edition just continues to get more and more exciting to us and hopefully to you. I know there's a lot of players that have been saying for the longest time, I would get into Thrones, but it's just the catalog is huge. And the number of people I've heard that say second edition, I'm definitely trying it. Absolutely, from all the different it's games, so all the different communities, yes. everybody's looking to play this game. It's be so uh, we'll be with you guys on that journey. Thank Get you so excited. much. More yeah. previews to come, right? More to come.